Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about commercial, commercial bidding, how to bid, how to get the people, what you're looking for, how do you win commercial bids? So if you're in business at all, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? I hope you're having a great day. But if it is your first time here, have a look around. You got tons of episodes and uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, anywhere podcasts are available. You can find this. Uh, Watch, listen, it doesn't matter, do it. And shameless plug of the time of the week. Yeah, you can hear it every week. But my name is Jersey, and I am a rep with windowcleaner.com. And I want to be your rep. That's what I do. So if you have any type of orders, there are so many of you, hundreds of you, who put your orders in every single time with me. Every time. And that is absolutely phenomenal. So first off, I want to say thanks to you. And I would like you to be a cool kid. You want to be a cool kid like them? Of course you do. Let me put your order in. My number is on the screen if you're watching in YouTube. uh, But my number is 862 312 2026. That is a cell phone. Call me, text me, shoot me a message, be like, yo, Jersey, put my order in. You could text me, hey, Jersey, great show. Hey, Jersey, your show sucked. Hey, Jersey, your nose is crooked. Did you ever notice that? It's crooked? Of course you did. <laughs> I haven't talked about my crooked, uh, crooked nose lately. So, but anyway, that is my number, 862 312 two zero two six so let me know uh text me let me put your orders in it costs you nothing extra and uh it's super radical for me because that's how i make my cheddar how else i exist in this world american window cleaner magazine i also own this if you didn't know there is a window cleaning magazine a real window cleaning magazine like paper mailed to your door every month that's where these stickers come from you've seen Tons and tons of people online with buckets covered in stickers, which, by the way, there is a sticker club if you just want to join in that. Uh, But get the subscription to the magazine. Super cheap for what you get. Awesome journalists, articles, something to read on the toilet. I I love paper magazines. So much better than the virtual version, by the way. It's also available online. Uh, In the paper magazine, there's always posters, too. If you want to stare at Steve-O for some reason... I mean, I, I have it popped out. That's not because I have a picture of Steve-O. It's because, you know, it's because I just have... Anyway, I digress. So I want to start doing shout-outs again, too. So first off, I want to say what's up to Chase Rigdon. What's going on, man? Uh, definitely one of the cool kids, by the way. Keith Earls, uh, an OG cool kid, by the way. Uh, Chris Finch, what's up, man? And uh, Gavin Perez, uh, who actually is the one who gave me the idea... For this show. If you have an idea or something you just want to hear me babble about, shoot me a message. Tell me what it is. I am restocking on show ideas, so let me know. Uh, But this week we are talking all about commercial, commercial proposals, commercial packets, like what is in there, how to get them, how to land them, what you're telling them. Everything to do commercial and especially focused on the packet side of it. Now, if you guys don't know, anytime I do commercial, By the way, I sold my company, so when I say I do, it's still past tense. Everything that I did was always through commercial. Anything commercial, right? Uh, By the way, let's talk about that real quick. Residential, obviously, those are houses. Route, that's something that is done once a month or more frequent. So once a week, once every two weeks, or once a month. Commercial is anything done every three months. Every six months, once a year. Big commercial, right? Commercial. But commercial can be business. It could be industrial. It could also be just, you know, apartments or condos. So definition of commercial. But for commercial for me, I always, always, always found myself wanting to differentiate myself from everybody around me, right? USP, I beat that thing like a dead horse. Unique selling point. It's the reason people would choose you, right? 10 window cleaners standing in a line. Why is somebody choosing you? Don't tell me price. If you've told me price is why somebody should choose you, 
A, that's a jacked up theory. Don't do that. Uh, but B, you don't watch the show yet. Start watching or listening and you'll know that uh, price is never something you want to sell. So take it out. You got 10 guys or girls standing in a line, all window cleaners. No one can talk price. Why do I choose you? It's a real good question, actually. It's a question to think about. Why would I choose you? People are like, well, because I clean, my windows get cleaned real well. That's not a thing. That's not a USP. No one cares that you clean windows really well because it's assumed everybody's going to clean windows. There is just clean and not clean. You know that, right? Like you can't clean something better. If somebody leaves the windows dirty, they're not clean. So there is just clean or not clean. Stop, go, right? But in commercial, in commercial, I need to differentiate myself and tell that person why to hire me, right? But here's a big thing. In commercial, there are always big ticket items. I'm dealing with uh, a company that has either one building or a bunch of buildings. And I need to show them, I'm out of bucket, Bob. Like, don't focus on the price. You're not going to hire the cheapest one on this giant commercial property because you have tenants to, to think about or building owners to think about. You need to hire the best company. And obviously, your price has to be semi-comparable or your value has to be way out of the park, right? So the point to all this in the commercial world is I want to differentiate myself, right? Show them, hey, this is why you want to choose me, right? I want them to see what I am. I, I offer, right? And I'm getting in with a, somebody who has the potential power to throw me four, five, six figure deals. You get these big buildings. Everybody kind of looks at them and goes, oh man, that's what I'm going to do. Just all commercial, all big buildings. Well, yes, that's nice. But understand too that Big commercial stuff is great, but it has its place. If you want to be just a commercial window cleaner and do just those kind of buildings, that's cool too. I think that that wouldn't be an awesome kind of niche. You'd... Anyway, I digress. So they're awesome. I love commercial for the fact that I can fill space with them. I can uh, schedule them certain times. I could do all that, right? But I want them to see me as a professional company like them right? So everything that I do in the commercial space is always to the top tier. It's always 10 10x. It's always not absurd, but it's always like, whoa, right? Because in my brain, I'm always thinking of, I'm competing against the, the guy that wrote his bid on a napkin, right? In houses, it's different. People are like, I just want to trust you because you're coming to my house, right? I want to feel comfortable with you because you're coming to my house. It's my castle, right? With route, the big thing is they want more pricing, right? Or they want to not have to worry about it, just get it done, right? There's a lot more stuff that they're more focused on in route. I'm not going to go and do a route with any of the stuff that I'm going to tell you here on commercial. This is just for commercial. I always go big in commercial. And we'll get to the packet in a little bit, but the packet for me is absolutely the biggest, biggest key. For me, at least. But how do you find commercial? Like, obviously, you know where the building is. You can see it, right? But how do you find who to talk to? The biggest part of commercial is if it's a house, there's a homeowner. It's the only person. If it's a route, I can just go in and talk to the, the manager or the owner. If not, it might be corporate, it might be bigger, but I can at least talk to somebody right away. In commercial, you cannot. And yes, there's probably like a very small section that can, but you cannot just walk in and say, hey, my name is Jersey with XYZ. I want to clean your windows. Uh, $12,000. That doesn't work, right? A, if you get into a building, it's a commercially leased building, there is no main place to talk to you. First off, you walk in and there's a bunch of offices. You can't just go into the first room and be like, hey. They're like, yeah, we, we, we lease here. Like, right? So you can't go in to do, to do that. You can't go in to just randomly talk to somebody. And the other thing is, is you can't just give them a number like that. Right? So how do you find them? 
If you haven't started dealing with property managers yet or a property management company, Google it. Google property managers around you. Google uh, property management companies. And you're going to find that there's a ton of them. There's a ton of them. And the big thing is, is that any large commercial property, right? A full strip mall or an office building or a light industrial or something. A lot of office buildings have a bunch of different tenants. There's one company that does all that. Condos, HOAs, POAs, all of those things are run by a property management company. Now, I know everybody says property managers, property managers, property managers. They're hard to get into because they have 30 different things they're trying to do every day, right? They need to worry about janitorial. They need to worry about windows. They need to worry about the bulbs getting changed, the garbage service, the, the lawn care, the new roof that they need. to. They need all of that plus customer complaints about how somebody's, you know, common area, the door squeaks or something. They have so much to deal with. The you know, once every six month window cleaning is not top priority unless you just happen to be there at the right time when they're trying to get bids. But they also need to have all of this lined up, which is great because when you are in with a property manager, they give you more leeway. You kind of just do it because they want it off their plate, right? But search a property management company. You'll find the company that met the management company, but you won't find the buildings. Another way to do it is to find the building then find the company. You have a building that you really, really like in your area? Here's something. Next time you're down, office building, grow a pair and walk in. Look at the front entranceway. There's usually a placard somewhere in the common area that says like, welcome to, you know, the Smithsonian building. I don't know. That was a bad example, but whatever the name is. And on that placard, it's going to say this building is managed by, you know, Fancy dancy property management company. And it's going to list it. All you got to do is search that now. You know that they do that building. Now you know who to call for that one building. Say, hey, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I was looking at your building, uh, 123 Main Street. And uh, I would love to give you some bids. You know, I just need to know property manager. I need to know the company. I know all that, right? It gets you in the door to know who specifically to do that to. Now, you know that you never want to call them and go, can I give you a bid? We know that. We've talked about that, right? We're looking for the specifics. Hey, uh, I just need to know the email for the um, you know, company that, or, or the, the, the property manager that does that specific building if it's a group, right? Because what happens is in a group, say it's you know, XYZ group and they're a management company, Tom Smith is the property manager for that building and two others. But they have 30 different property managers in that one building. That's another awesome one. When you get into a property management company, they'll spread you around like wildfire. Really. I'm talking about potentially dozens of buildings that are these giant ones. But getting in with property managers is tricky. Again, they don't care about you. They just don't. They have so many other things on their plate, right? But there's another side. If you can get that information, you know who it is. And a lot of times, they're always willing to give you emails. Hey, I'm just looking at uh, 123 Main Street. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, who's the contact for that building. Right? They'll give you all that information because they kind of have to, to some degree. Right? Usually, the way you ask, ask confidently. They'll give you the information. Oh, here's an email and number. His name's Tom Smith. Okay, cool. Hey, I really appreciate it. Have a great one. Now, you know who. You've gotten past all the gatekeepers, right? What you can do is something called an unsolicited bid. An unsolicited bid means they didn't ask you for it. They didn't tell you, hey, Jersey, I need a bid on this property, right? You're going to send them the bid without them even asking. Now, what this does is it triggers something that's different. If I think of, oh, I got to get my windows done, and then I talk to you and you give it to me, it's just part of my same thought. But if you send something called an unsolicited bid, now, all of a sudden, you've taken that no thought at all to you know, all of a sudden, like, flash in the pan, like, oh, window cleaning. Uh, uh, did I? Did we at? Who? There's all of a sudden, they think so much more on it. And it gets you past the gatekeeper. It gets you past their brain. And they're like, stop, right? They're going to try to halt you. 
It's an awesome, awesome thing. It's sending them a bid when they didn't even ask for it. Now, yes, you still want to get people to ask for it. You still want to contact property managers. You still want to go to BNIs. You still want to go to property management association meetings. You want to do all that stuff and get in really, really good with the property managers. But unsolicited bids are super, super powerful. But what do you send them? Like, what is an unsolicited bid? Again, you can't write it down on a napkin, right? You can't. You can't uh, call them and go, hey, just want to let you know it would be $5,000. Let me know. You can't do that because it'd be like, what? Who, who is click? Right? So I do packets, and I hope you do packets for commercial. Let me, let me start by explaining the cost on these packets. I was paying about just under $10 per packet myself. Just under $10 a packet for this whole packet. I'll explain what it is. I had <clears throat> a folder, custom printed folder, full color, super glossy on my company, right? Really, really well-designed folder itself. Inside the folder, it's just a two-pocket folder with a little business card thing. I have my super ultra velvet cards, which I have them up there, but if you've ever seen one of my business cards from a show, they are trifecta paper, satin, super thick, extremely nice cards. Um, if you, I put one of those in there. And then on each side, I have staggered cut paper. Now, staggered cut means that, you know, a normal piece of paper is 8.5 by 11. One is 8.5 by 11. One is 8.5 by 10. One is 8.5 by 9. You know, keeps going, right? Each of those pages is entirely on one service I offer, right? Pressure washing for facade, uh, ground cleaning, so uh, hardscapes, uh, concrete, drive throughs parking lots, that type of thing, right? Window cleaning. If you do janitorial, that's in there. I'm going to have stagger cut for all the different things so they can see that. On the other side... I'm going to have all of my documents. I'm going to have my, uh, uh, not invo invoice, but my uh, quote itself, right? I'm going to have that front and fore forefront right there. Boom. It's going to be on nice letterhead, thick paper letterhead, usually like a, uh, uh, not satin, anyway, canvas, uh, not canvas. Anyway, gosh, I can't think of it. Anyway, nice thick paper. That's where the bit is. I'm going to have everything broken down and a ton of information. That whole page is going to be full. It's not just going to be like windows. Boom. It's going to be windows cleaned. Inside, outside. We wipe frames down. We wipe sills. We wipe all this. Blah, blah, blah. All on there. Behind that, I'm going to have my insurance. My insurance certificate. I'm in there. I'm going to have my associations page. Full, high gloss. All of my logos to every association I'm part of. If you're part of an association, tell people you are. They want to know that you do more than just try to make a buck. Well, this guy knows his stuff. He's in the BNI groups. He's in this. He's in this. He was voted number one window cleaning company. He's done this. All that stuff on one page. This is our associations. You know, we pride ourselves in doing more than cleaning windows or whatever. On that, I'm going to have reference letters. If anybody from any of the major companies that I've done work for wants to write me a letter, I will 100%. Hey, man, listen, I'm trying to do more commercial. If there's any, if you could just take any time to write a letter, you know, on your letterhead, that'd be amazing, right? I'm going to pull that in, make copies, high res copies, and I'm going to put it in everything, right? I'm going to do my USP page. Right, so when they look at it, is why choose us? And the reasons they would only if they chose us, they only get those with us. USP, unique selling points. Boom, 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 boom. Right, with like a picture of our team, or a picture of me, or anything that you're giving them to kind of say, okay, this is more than a company. This is who they are. Right, I'm gonna absolutely break everything down. And that packet, when they open it, they're like, holy cow, there's a ton of stuff here. It's going to take them a couple minutes to go through it. It's going to take them time to go through it because they're interested in it. And 
The higher the quality of something, the less somebody throws it away. This is the weirdest concept ever. But the theory is you make a business card. And I know people who have done business cards like they're phenomenal. I know a guy who's doing his business cards were a dollar something a piece. A piece for one business card. But it was die cut, layered, trifecta, sandwiched, uh, textured. Like this thing, like you get it and you're like, wow, like I, I feel like I bought this thing, right? People aren't throwing his card away. You give somebody a real thin, thin, crappy, free Vista print card, they're going to be like, oh, cool, and they're going to pitch it. It's garbage. The same goes with all those other documents. I'm going to be super glossy, nice paper that when they touch it, they're going to be not only seeing it, but they're going to be feeling it. Another one, right? All that's in there. Everything is super glossy. When they have bids, even if they put it to the side, they're going to have, you know, the guy from the other company who's going to have like a carbon copy form written down windows. They got the other guy who's got something printed out on a general form where the fonts don't all match, right? Then they have my packet. Full color, smells like printing. Everything's in there. They look at everything. They're like, holy cow, look at this guy compared to these guys. I don't even have to look at the price. If this guy's a little bit more, yeah, but look at his company. Of course he's a little bit more. You're getting like a company here. I want that guy. That guy cares so much that this job will be off my plate and I will be happy forever. He's going to do amazing. My tenants are going to love me. Property managers want you to take it off their plate. That's their number one thing they want from you to make their life easier. That's what you do. One of the big things I always do to property managers is I will always put a little bio on myself. Owner of the company, here it is. This is my cell phone. If you ever have issues, need emergency service, or have anything, shoot me a text at my number, and you can text me anytime. Everybody's like, oh, I don't want to be bothered. Nobody's bothering you. They just want the assurance. It's like a seven-day rain guarantee. A seven-day rain guarantee on something else. This is residential. A seven-day rain guarantee does not get used. Nobody uses it, right? Nobody uses it, but what they do is they take that and they make it feel more comfortable, right? That is the biggest thing about it. And that's why I'm, I'm putting these packets together. Now, how do you bid a, a building like that? On a commercial building, pricing is always different. Uh, I still about $4 a pane, first through fourth floor. People are always like, ah, oh, first floor I charge this, second floor I charge this, fourth floor... I charge and then I do this and then square footage. Don't, don't overcomplicate it. Don't overcomplicate it. The biggest thing people do, the biggest mistake in bidding is people overcomplicate it. Now, if it's big and it's overwhelming you, awesome. All you have to do is when you bid this thing out the way that we're talking about, go back through and break it down into time to, to double check. You know how when you used to be in math class, you do a number and then you would do the number backwards and that's how you would check if it's right? See if it works forward and backward. It's the same thing. When you go in and you count panes on a building, or if they're really, really big and you're not counting panes, or there's lots of little windows and the pane thing really won't work out, you just do time. Break it down. Get a yellow legal pad. And then every little second, okay, that will take me 15 minutes. Walk over. That'll take me 30 minutes. All right, this will take me all in man hours. You write it all down, individual lines. Boom, 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 boom. Now what you do is you go back to your office and you add all that up. And if you come to a total of, say, $28,000, and you're like, oh, my God, that's so much, figure your time out. If you say, hey, I want to make $75 a man hour, right? Say so that's your, your, your total. I want to make $75 a man hour. By the way, that means that if you have four people working, it's four man hours. You know how that breaks down, right? So I want to make 75 a man hour. I looked at this project. I bid it by time. I walked up in 15 minutes. This will take me 30 minutes. This will take me an hour. This is four hours, this, right? You broke it down. You added it all up. That's based on time. Even if it comes to $28,000, you're like, oh my gosh, I thought this would be like 10000 That's way too much. No, it's not. You just told yourself, if you want to make X amount per hour, you just bid it by time. That's your bid, right? If you bid it by window count, which a lot of buildings are super easy, I can do that, right? Six, 12, 20, like I can add the windows up real quick, write it down each side, 
and then I'm going to do that. I can do that and cross check with my other one. If you're ever unsure, count window pane. Window pane usually can be about four dollars a window or a pane. The problem is, is that some windows, especially on commercial properties, one bay will be like nine windows. And three of them are spandrel, meaning you can't see through them and all this stuff, right? So it's like, well, sometimes that adds up and sometimes it's a little bit off. So doing it by time on a bigger building is always better, but you can check it yourself off with those. If you bid the, 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 the project by time, breaking it into small piece, you can, you can eat a whole cow one bite at a time, right? Same thing with this. No matter how big the project, you can bid it absolutely perfect because you can look at window five windows difficulty and tell me how long it's going to take, right? Now just do that a hundred times on these big buildings and now you have your total. It's super, super simple. It's not something to get overwhelmed with. If you bid time and it's small enough, if you bid it and you look at a building and you go, ah, this will take me 16 hours, it's going to be wrong. You, you, you don't do it that way, right? But if you break it down into little increments, right? Little, like one side or nook or cranny of a building. I've had buildings where I've had two full sh sheets filled up with times and I'm just calculating it all up. And I get to the end, I'm like, Ooh, that is not what I thought, but I know it's spot on because I know that if I charge that, I will make this amount by the hour. And I know that's where I want to be. Right? So bidding itself, break it down, make it easy. I have, and this is, I've had this at least 50 times, right? People call me a lot. They send me emails. And say, hey, I got this big project I'm a little confused on. I just want another second set of eyes. I do a ton of that, right? Not just in, in like, you know, private coaching situations, but just for normal people. And in that, they send me these things and they'll send me blah, 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 blah. I'm thinking like, you know, uh, 20, 28, 50 for the price. And you'll go through it and you'll look at it and you'll be like, well, can you get it done in this amount of time? I had a guy one time and he said that uh, he sent four buildings and uh, he said it would be $15,000 is what he was thinking. I said, how did you get to that number? He's like, just looking at it, man. I can tell. Okay. So let's break it down. These buildings are super, uh, there's four that are exactly the same, different uh, levels, right? It was kind of hilly, but all flat around it. So four of the exact same buildings. And I took a side of the building and I said, how long would it take you to do that side? He's like, oh, my guy's probably three man hours, you know, because it'd be an hour and a half for two. I said, okay. So we put it all together. Boom, 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 boom. The whole price of the whole building came to just under $3,000. And he's like, I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think that's right. I said, it's, it is right. You just went through and told me on all those pieces. Oh, man, I just, something that big, I really thought it'd be more. You you can't charge fifteen thousand dollars on a building that's supposed to be like three thousand dollars. You're so out of the ballpark, and it's because you guessed. When you know facts, you're not guessing. You know. All you have to do is take the uncertainty out, and then there's confidence. That's all you're left with. By the way, on a side note, if you want a little tidbit, and you're still listening. People are unsure of the economy right now, right? People are like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. Really worried. Take the problem out and you can't worry about it. If you take the problem, all you have is a solution. So go, okay, well, what does it cost? I, I have $5,000 of bills a month. Take $10,000 and put it in an account that you do not touch and that is your ICE account. Now, you don't worry if the economy goes to crap. Because you got two months of bills if you stop working for two months. If you want to have more than that, awesome. Obviously, you're still going to be doing something in those two months. You're not stopping 100%. So two months saved is more like probably four months of bills off of those two months. But in theory, that's all you have to do. Now, if you have six months, say, of bills, your living expenses, everything, groceries, blah, 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 here's what I spend a month, you have that sitting in an account, yeah, you can't maybe do that overnight. But if your worry is that, oh man, what if the economy goes? I could destroy it. It can't destroy you now. You have everything. But your one problem you just had a solution for now, that's all you have. Anyway, I digress. Right? So after you bid them, 
you've counted it all up, you know what it is, you've done the packet, you've done the things, you've blown them away. Well, they're not always going to say yes right away. So you have to follow up. The biggest thing to do on commercial stuff is follow up. Follow up is always going to be more closing than first time, especially on commercial. You want to not pester them. You want to be extremely active. Because again, you showed them a pro, you showed them a packet that showed this is what I do. Now you're calling them saying this is what I do. You're a priority. I'm prioritizing you now to get your bid. I will prioritize you when I get the work. The problem is those other guys that are doing that little sheet they never once call. I handed in a bid. I don't know what happened. Okay, because you didn't care. You don't care. If you're not following up, you don't care. They can tell you don't care. You want the now. You're not in it for this company. You're not in it for this legacy. You're not in it to provide a long-term thing. You're in it for money now. If I go to a route job and go, hey, your windows are clean up for 10 bucks, and they go, I don't know, I'll think about it. Okay. And they never hear from you again, they just stop the conversation. You're looking for beer money. Follow up is absolutely the most important thing you can possibly do for your business. Absolutely. Follow up. And when you do get them, book them in the slow times, pre spring, pre fall. You can do that. If there's six months, you work them in the schedule. Sure. You get it and they're like, hey, we need it done by this date. Then you can adjust it. This time maybe do it, but adjust it for the next time. Every commercial project will always be reoccurring. It's your job to make them reoccur more than they want or more than they think their budget allows, right? Obviously, you know if tenants are there or build up or road degree grime things. Every three months is way better than every six months. Not only am I going to be able to clean the windows, I'm going to keep them cleaner longer and you're not going to have build up. You're not going to have issues and your tenants are going to like, you know, having cleaner windows, right? But follow it up and book it. When that's it, you're done. You've just closed commercial. So congratulations. By the way, do you want to be a cool kid? You probably are already, but you want to be a certified cool kid. Let me put your order in. My number is 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. So text me. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Send me a sticker, man. A brand new edition three stickers that are all uh, good and ready. I will uh, send you a sticker for free if you let me know. So definitely, definitely do that. Uh, And if you haven't yet, please, I, I, I beg of you, get the American Window Cleaner magazine. AWCMAG.com is the website to get the subscription. Get a subscription. I see your name come across. I know which one of you are awesome because you have the AWC. You're an epic, cool kid. I know, but I do want everybody to have the magazine because A, it supports the industry. B, it supports me. But C, you're bettering your, your company even more. Remember, everything we do for our company is something that somebody else is doing for theirs. That's how you get elevated. So, anyway, I definitely appreciate it. And until next week, go out there and be happy.